the mystery of God and Christ, in whom all hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge reside. Ephesians says, when you hear or when you heard about Christ, you were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is, is Jesus. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ inspires us. He motivates us and demonstrates our potential to rise above what may be considered normal perceptions. So why do we need the Lord? Because the real truth is without him, we do not see all of our needs that are that are already met. We don't see that. We They already provided for us. If that was not so, Satan wouldn't have so many tools to distract us. But because of God's generosity and the resources that he expends, us residing in the physical world, Satan has so many tools to distract us that we forget to stay on track. What do we need? We need the Lord. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, there are so many of us that are prominent in our lives and in our communities and in our households. We're going to find it hard to humble ourselves. I said we. Nobody's exempt. But if we come to Jesus as children, we realize that as an infant, our needs are being supplied. That infant knows that somebody else has to feed it, has to care for it, has to clean it, even though that infant doesn't understand all the complexities behind how that gets done. Jesus said, let the little children come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. This is what we need Jesus for. This is what we strive for. Now, I know this is true for me. There's so many things that I believed that were important. I finally realized they were not. Why do we need the Lord? He came to show us exactly what was important, what we needed. The question itself lends you to understand the ex accessibility that you have to Christ and the Holy Spirit. So you're not going to answer the question using your senses for touch, smell, what you can see. We do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. Mm -hmm. But the entire universe is out there waiting to be discovered by us if we go to the our Lord and Savior. Are we going to be stuck here in these perishable bodies? Or are we going to realize there's such a great reward waiting for us that we can only achieve through Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some ugly truths out there that we got to realize. We mentioned it before. There are people out there that will acknowledge God but will not acknowledge him as Alpha and Omega. Will put themselves in opposition of him. Well, they've been given that choice. But we as Christians must strive to look beyond those physical tools that they use to distract us. And we must know the only foundation that will allow us to overcome is that which resides in Jesus Christ. It is the greatest promise. That reward is the greatest promise ever conceived. Why would you settle for anything less? God said, and I believe it. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess 
those you see around you who may not embrace this rigorous path of righteousness may not be lost. They may find their way, not through your criticisms, not through your judgments, but through your example. And your example will be one where you obviously cared for, where you obviously nurtured, where you find happiness in places where other people seem to be in stress. So we're not going to go our, to our brother with criticism and judgment, but we are going to go with them with love to support them in finding the way to answer the question, why do we need the Lord? <clears throat> like I said, there are certain things that we know as Christians that must come to pass. However, we as Christians know, or at least we're taught the true death, and we're taught the difference between that and everlasting life. Which one would you choose? What do you desire? What does your heart seek? Do you even know what it should be seeking? It shouldn't be seeking that which somebody just simply told you. I mentioned earlier today that I thank my mother for putting me on a path to God, but it was me who chose that path. And choosing that path was just the beginning to stay on that path. Admittedly, after falling off that path, getting back on that path and falling off again, the only guidance I had was that from my Jesus and the Holy Spirit he left for me. This message is not for those who already understand this. This is for those who are looking for the answer to the question that seems to be eluding them that they can't answer through science or math and other methods. This is a matter of faith. I can't give it to you. Your neighbors can't give it to you. You must go to the Lord in prayer and ask him, why do I need you? He'll answer you. Answer Daniel, as he answered John. It may not be, come to you immediately, but it's essential that you ask the question. Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus said, right along with many other things that I hold precious, feed my sheep. But that's not easy. Sin doesn't sleep. The enemy doesn't sleep. However, we must be vigilant. We must be strong. And remember that nothing can overcome us when we reside in Christ. This is a question that takes so many facets because we need so many things. So many things. So many things that seem trivial that we don't realize. That those blessings, just like the birds are fed, come from Christ. The smallest things, we must recognize him in. And that is where we're going to realize why we need him. For to us, Christ was born. To us, a son was given. The government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. Now, the story of Job <laughs> taught us a lot. It taught us and gave us an illustration of good and evil. But I tell you, 
God paid a trick on Satan. He told him, he says, well, you can do what you want to Joe, but don't touch your soul. Don't do that. I come to realize that through all that Job went through, what strengthened him was the catch-22. The spirit was always there. Constantly. Through whatever was thrown at him. Now, Satan had been smart. He says, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You can't do that. That's cheating. Well, you know, I'm God. I do what I want. You want to take this battle? You want to take this fight? But I'm going to cut myself off from what is mine. He is of me. This is Job. He's one of my best. I'm not going to abandon him now, and he will not abandon you. Job made the ultimate sacrifice and won the ultimate prize. Jesus, another example of the rewards of suffering in God's name. And with that reward, he's coming back to claim us all, his bride. And without him doing that, what is our future? What is the future like without Jesus? There is no future. That's why you need him. When I look back, when I step back, and I try to take everything in, I can't get past God's infinite mercy, love, and his grace. And the fact that he gives it to us unconditionally. An example, again, of sending his son to complete this plan for our salvation. Why do we need the Lord? Well, I, I suppose maybe we don't. We don't need anything. But without him, we won't be anything. So if your ambition is to be nothing, you don't need him. But if you're reaching for the gold, if you want the ultimate price, that has been paid already for you, then the question is answered. Yeah, I need the Lord. I need him to see me through every day, every moment of my life. I need to know him. I need to feel his presence in the Holy Spirit. I must walk with him continuously because the attack on me is unending. I need to realize it when I wake up in the morning. I need to realize that when I go to work. I need to realize that when I get behind that wheel of that car, that he sees me through safely and ensures that I don't hurt someone else. If you don't understand these simple things are blessings from God, then you don't have the answer to the question. You don't know the answer to the question. But I put the question to you, I invite you to let the Holy Spirit in so he can implant that answer on your heart. Only he can do that. Nobody else can tell you, well, yeah, you need this, you need that, you need this. We disregard people who say things to us all the time, even in their best intentions. We disregard them. You go to the Holy Spirit for one reason, because you know you need him. You ask the answer to this question because you realize there's a need in your life. And I'm telling you, there's only one answer. It is not easy to be ready for the bridegroom when he comes. We have to help each other. We have to serve each other. We have to hold up each other. We have to forgive each other. We have to love each other. And that's not easy. You need the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for listening.
Thank you, Brother Doug, for that message. Uh, we will be joined by Sister Jadane, who will be doing our communion. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, when my husband was giving that message, it just brought something to mind, so I would like to read it to you. It's from Psalms 51, four, 1 through 4. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your multitude of your tender mercy, loving kindness. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me through land. Repeat me from my inequities and guilt. Cleanse me and make me wholly pure from my sin. That's what God can do for us. Can you turn that? Um, I also have a, a reading from Titus 2, 13 through 4. Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our greatest God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all the lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for the good works. Don't we all want to be zealous for good works and be pleasing to our Lord? Yes, we do. We do. And that's how it should be. From Matthew 26 through 28, and as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take it, eat of this. This is my body. So I encourage you to take the bread and eat it. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for, for the remission of sin. Take your cup and remembrance of him. And lastly, I want to leave you with First Peter 1 through 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him, now you believe in him. In him, you are filled with the unexpressible and the glories of and joy. Thank you, Jesus, so much for giving your, us your gift. We are so thankful and we're so sorry also that you had to do it for us sinners. We want to lift you up today and always and wherever we go, we want to remember your gift mm -hmm. in your name, mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you so much, Minister Doug and Jadine. We do want to take a moment to invite you to join the family of Christianity. We want to extend the right hand of fellowship to Jesus Christ. I mean, Douglas spoke about why we need to receive God. And the only way that is possible is through his son, Jesus Christ. Professing with your mouth and believing in your heart that he died for our sins and your sin. So it doesn't matter what you've done or where you are at this moment in your life. He is there for you. So he wanted to offer this opportunity, um, seek us church that is in your community and if um, you cannot find someone to offer you uh, the baptism of Jesus Christ feel free to reach out to us and we will figure out how we can make that ha happen for you even if it's a road trip we need to make to make that possible for you so with that uh, Minister Steve turn it over to you for your prayer. Yes, okay. Everybody, can we please bow our heads 
and we close our eyes. Here's the benediction, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the word that you've given us, Father, and we always thank you for being able to partake in the elements, Lord, that you've given us, Father. Knowing that you came, came down here, Father, gave up your body, gave up your blood, just so we can live, not once, but twice, Father. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for blessing the speaker, Lord, to bring good forth knowledge, as well as the knowledge turned into wisdom, in Jesus' name, Father. Father, we thank you for the day as we travel, Lord, as we move forward, Lord, not looking to the to, to behind us, Lord, helping us to look forward, Lord, to where we can always edify and glorify your name. We ask that you continue, Lord, to bless over the church, to bless over each and every person's life, Lord, that is involved in knowing and wanting and seeking you, Father. We love you and we praise you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, everybody on Facebook for joining us this morning, or if you're viewing it after the fact, thank you for watching us. And with that, we love you until we come together again. Have a very blessed day. Amen. Amen.